Hopefully some of you guys are fans out there and know exactly what that was all about. Welcome back travelers, I just thought I'd have it here and thank you. If you're a subscriber and you've come back for some more content, thank you so much for the support. If you're brand new to the channel and you enjoy what you see today, go right down there, right, right there, and click the little red, right here, red subscribe tab, right? And then when it goes gray, it goes right here, you should see a little bell. Click on that. That way you know exactly when new, new content comes out every single week, right? I'm going for every Friday, but we'll see how well that goes. I'm trying really hard. As you can hear, my voice sounds like complete D-O-O-D-O-O -O 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 today. Do do. Because I've been sick all week long and I've been waiting so long to do this episode. And I'm so excited that I'm able finally to talk a little bit. I lost my voice for like the last three days and I've been sitting around the house super quiet. Hopefully my voice lasts for this whole thing. What we're going to be covering is what kind of camera equipment do you need to start a YouTube channel or start a vlog or, you know, whatever you want to do? All the chat rooms that I've been in is I'm trying to, you know, slowly build my channel and try to get advice and work with other people and work with other creators to kind of improve my content as well as help them improve theirs. A constant question I always see is like, what camera should I start with, right? And I think this camera or this question is totally objective based upon what your price range is and what you're looking for and what you want to be able to do and how compact you want it to be versus how big you want it to be. There's a lot of things that go into consideration. We're talking about what camera to start with. And I'm just going to show you the equipment that I have and kind of give you an idea of what you can get started with. So let's go ahead and take a look at that equipment. So the first camera on the list is this little guy right here. Now let me tell you, this guy is ghetto. I can't even get to focus. Come on, find your focus. Don't do my eyes. There you go, right? It's the Andor, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Andor, Andoir, Andor, whatever. It's a little budget camera that I got off of Banggood, okay? Now this was actually like the third camera I ever bought, but I was looking for something to do some quick B-roll with, right? Now I'm gonna show you what we filmed earlier today uh, when I was taking my dogs out to the dog park and kind of testing all these cameras out in the highlight situations. It's a beautiful day out today out in California and I wanted to make sure that I got some really, really good lighting. Now, the one thing about this camera is it only goes up to 720, okay? So that's a huge limitation. But as you can see in this clip right here, you get a little bit of weird interlacing and then when I do do a little bit of color grading on it, it just doesn't look quite right, right? But the cool thing about this camera and what I've kind of found I can do with it is even though the picture quality is kind of garbage, it looks kind of like a 1980s camcorder. And so if I ever want to do some vintage feel videos, this is actually a really good one that I have to do less post editing with to actually get some pretty cool shots out of. That is a cool little budget camera. Now I am going to actually put some of these down in the description just to give you an idea because the biggest thing about this is understanding you don't need the most expensive equipment. A lot of people out there, nothing against any of the awesome YouTubers out there who are using all that high-end equipment, but when they talk about something cheap, they're talking about cheap relative to their $3,000 or $8,000 camera. Well, yeah, $1,000 camera at that point is cheap. It's one-eighth the price. But for people like us, I think I spent a total of... I don't know, 40 bucks on this thing. So it still shoots. I mean, it shoots garbage. Let's, let's be honest, but there's something I can do with it. And for 40 bucks, I still try to get use out of this little thing. Second camera on the list I actually have is the camcorder. I actually use pretty often. This I originally picked up to get some B roll and start learning how to shoot B roll, or at least have that secondary uh, camera for multicam shots. And it's not a bad camera. It's just a little Sony. What is it? The uh, CX 405, right? It's a fun little camera. I mean, it does its job, it does what it's supposed to do. And there's one thing I'm starting to learn as I'm getting new cameras is I like the colors Sony gives you, okay? You can't get a flat um, profile. And so you have to kind of work with what you got. And I like the color profile that Sony seems to have. Both this camera as well as what I'm shooting on right now, which is my A5000, it's not that high tech of stuff here. All my cameras only max out at 1080p. I have no 4K cameras whatsoever. but. This guy right here is a pretty sweet little gem. I've used, well, a lot. This little guy, I like it. I really, really do like it. I actually use it to film uh, some of my nephew's uh, football games because I could actually get some tight end pictures and I can actually zoom in a little bit better than when I'm using my lenses on uh, both my A5000 or my, well, 
the D3200, which is coming up next. This one wasn't too much. This one was in the $100 range. I don't remember exact prices right now because prices change and this camera is about two years old. So I don't know what they're running for now. But like I said, I'll put some links down in the description just to give you an idea of some of the cameras you can use. But some of the quality that you can actually get out of something, this little simple little guy right here, I'm going to put it up right now. And a lot of these examples, like I said before, I did it with a color grading comparison, right? So it starts off with just a regular shot. I kind of shifted over right here to show you some color grading, just to show you what you can kind of do with it. Now, the, ca the color in this is actually pretty good. And you'll see through all of the uh, examples I'm gonna give you right now, they're all using the same LUTs. And it's not actually LUTs, really. It's just my presets that I like. I like some really vibrant, bright colors when I'm filming outside. And so you'll see in like the next two examples that the greens are super bright, the blues are super bright. I, I like that. I, I don't know if that's really good for cinematography. I don't know, I'm still learning. But I do like seeing that the, uh, the, the color grade is actually pretty good. It doesn't really change too much, which means the initial color pattern is actually pretty nice. I've got my D3200, right? This is kind of like my go-to for everything. This was my very first camera when I first got interested in uh, photography. I wanted to find a cool little camera to start off with. Actually, I take that back. I, I don't have my very first camera. My very, fir very first camera was a D90, okay? I got stolen. It happens. But um, when the insurance paid for it, I got my D3200 because D90s weren't on the market anymore, so I basically had to upgrade. I only spent about 350 for this guy, and I got the body plus the kit lens. I don't know if it's still running about that same price. I think it's still somewhere in that range, so we'll see. But absolutely amazing camera, um, really good at you know kind of serving the purposes that it needs. Everybody, anybody who's ever used uh, a DSLR understands the basics of the DSLR. The one big advantage of this thing over shooting with my uh, A5000 is this one can go to 60 frames. So I can get a little bit of a slow-mo uh, when I drop down to 24 frames and it shoots 60 frames, however, in 720, not 1080. So slight drop, but you know what? When we're just starting off and we're trying to get ourselves established, like I said, 4K, not a real necessity. Most people are watching stuff on their cell phones nowadays. So let me kind of show you with this. This filming wise, especially outdoors, is actually my favorite to film because you can change the color profile. There's no presets as far as I can tell. There might be some in there. I don't know. I haven't been able to find them. There's no presets. But what this does have is the ability to kind of drop down your contrast, drop down your saturation and kind of lower it to a flat profile. So you'll see in this clip right here, it's actually pretty flat colored, right? It's it's grays and lights and whatever. But then when I do the same color grade that I showed you with the other one, all of a sudden you get some brilliant popping out colors. And I like it. I, I don't know about you, but I like it. I think that's how I, it should look. Now, I do have the A, uh, A5000, which is actually what I'm using right now. And that is probably my favorite little camera to use in general. I know I said the D32 is my favorite, but that is my favorite overall. I just kind of use it all the time. But with the A5000, it's so small and so compact, I can dang near make it a pocket camera. Now, everybody's always talking about the you know A6300, the A7000, all these cameras that are way, 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 way more expensive. I got this one right here recently for 289, the A5000 for 289. Got it used on Amazon, actually in great quality, had like one little scratch on the, um, the, the display screen and that was it. Absolutely amazing. Now we'll show you some of the footage that we shot outside as well. Same thing here, uh, basically showing you the flat or the, the regular profile and then pushing into the uh, color grading here just to kind of give you an idea. Really, really quick shot of it. If you guys you know are looking for a high quality color camera, I, I'm sold on Sony. I never was. I was a Nikon person. Like I, I wasn't even about Canon. I was all on Nikon. Now I didn't really know any better, but that was kind of my thing. Uh, but the A, the, the Sony's I'm really, really digging between that. And then my handy cam, uh, I'm really, really digging on it. Lastly, and most importantly, every person in the world pretty much has one of these. This right here, I think is the most important camera you have on you. Now, first of all, the quality of cameras nowadays on your smartphones are absolutely amazing. I mean, they are unmatched. Um, well, until you start getting to the high-end cameras, of course. But as you can see right here, this is a clip taken with the phone itself. And the color is absolutely amazing to begin with. You can barely even really get a distinguishing difference when you look at the color grading on it. So, I mean, pretty awesome vivid colors and the clarity is just amazing but the biggest advantage with the cell phones that i found is 
awesome slow-mo and super slow-mo abilities. So if you wanna get that silky smooth slow-mo, super slow on the, at least on the S9, I don't know how the uh, iPhones work, but they're super slow on the S9 Plus that actually lets you get 240 frames per second. That's 10 times slower when played back at 24 frames. Um, that's one tenth the speed of your traditional frame. It's, it's just creeping along, right? It's standard slow-mo, which actually gets some great color that you don't need exceptional lighting for, is actually at 120 frames. So you get some pretty quality slow-mo when it comes to those. I hope this was helpful to you guys. There's a lot of different, you know, cameras out there that you can be using and, you know, go try it out. Go test out your shots. It's not necessarily about what it looks like to begin with. I say audio is actually more important. And if you guys want something on audio, of what I use for my audio because I do have a couple different audio sources. Let me know down in the uh, comments. Just say, hey, let us know about audio or hey, let us know about lighting because I do have some really cheap lighting options in my house. My entire kit, all my audio, all my cameras and all my lighting, I have spent less than a thousand dollars on everything I have. Now that seems pretty extreme for some people who are just trying to start off and they're looking for a hundred, two hundred dollar cameras and stuff like that. But understand that this collection has been gathered over a couple of years. Ask about it down in the comments, lighting, audio, or anything else that I've gone through as a beginning YouTuber and trying to find out what works for me and what I can use to make the best quality content I can. If you guys like today's content and you're brand new to the channel, once again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed today's video and think you might want to enjoy one of the previous, I've got this one right here. Or go right here. And this is YouTube basically saying, hey, this is something you might like that I've made before. So you can check that out as well. Y'all know the deal. I'm Son Havoc and I'm out of here. Peace.